In this video, we're going to take you through some of the common operations that you may need when Smartbench is in the middle of a job. Let's start with an important safety feature, the emergency stop button. This button, located on the lower X-beam, allows you to instantly stop your Smartbench with one single push. Be aware that if Smartbench is switched off at the main power switch during a job, the position will be lost and the machine will need to be rehomed. Smartbench may not be able to lift the tool if it's jammed in the stock material. If that happens, you'll hear a stalling noise during rehoming. If this does happen, you'll need to lift the Z-axis manually. To remove the spindle motor from the material, with the power off, you'll be able to manually turn the Z-head pulley and the lead screws. To rotate the Z-head pulley clockwise to lift the spindle motor. Once the tool has been removed from the workpiece, it's now safe to move the machine in the XY plane. So you can move the upper X beam and prepare to restart Smartbench. During the power down, Smartbench will have lost its position. So it's important to re-square and re-home before startup. In this case, I'm gonna manually square, but you could also auto square on the console. Another safety feature of Smartbench is the two interrupt bars on the upper X beam. The main purpose of these bars is to pause the machine in the event of emergency or if there is an obstacle on top of the stock material. If one of the interrupt bars is pushed, Smartbench will pause all active jobs and operations. A screen will appear on the console telling you that Smartbench is preparing to resume. Once Smartbench is ready to resume, a new screen will come up on the console and you can decide whether to resume or cancel your job. Before resuming your job, you need to check why the interrupt bar was pushed and remove any obstacles that might be in the way. Smartbench won't allow you to resume the job if the interrupt bar stays pushed. If the obstruction has caused an access to stall, you'll have to cancel your job and rehome and resquare Smartbench before you can resume. The interrupt bars may or may not have prevented the access from stalling, depending on the scenario. If the resistance was too high for the motors to overcome the obstacle, then the Smartbench's axis could have stalled and the position would be lost. In this instance, you'd need to cancel the job, rehome and resquare Smartbench, and then start again. If the resistance didn't induce the stall, the job can simply be restarted as long as the obstacle has been removed. It may be necessary to pause Smartbench during a job. For example, to empty an extractor bag during a long job, or to clear debris from the machine. To pause Smartbench at any time, simply press the pause button in the top right of the console screen. Smartbench will pause the job and slow down the spindle to a stop. If you told Smartbench at the start of your job to lift the spindle on pause, it will do that now. Once you're ready to resume, press the green play button on the right hand side of the screen to resume the job. To cancel the job, Press the red X on the left hand side of the screen and you'll see a pop-up come up with yes or no. Press yes to confirm the cancellation and the job will be cancelled. Another common task that you have to carry out when using Smartbench is tool changing. Now, depending on the complexity of the part that you're cutting, some jobs may require you to use two different tools. Smartbench does not support automatic tool changing, so you will have to create two job files for the different tools you're using. To do this, you'll cut the file with tool number one, change your tool, and then move on to the file with tool number two. The first step when changing your tool is to remove the spindle motor from the Z-head. You can find detailed instructions on how to do this in our spindle unloading video, which is linked in the description. But for now, I'll just cover the basics. First, undo the clamping bolt, Next, unplug the power and signal cables. And finally, rotate the spindle so the switch is facing the front and it will simply lift out of the Z head. Before changing your tool, you need to select the correct size collet for the tool that you'll be using. For detailed instructions on how to choose the right size collet, see our collets video, which will also be linked in the description below. Once you've got your chosen tool and the correct collet to go with it, you can remove the previous tool from the spindle motor. Once you're happy, you can refit the spindle motor to the Z head. Before you fit it, ensure that the switch is turned on. Then being careful of the tool, place the spindle motor into the clamping collar, 
Rotate slightly anti-clockwise. Check that the spindle can freely rotate in the clamp. Tighten the clamping bolt until the spindle can no longer rotate. Then apply no more than one eighth of a turn. Do not exceed this tightening since it will crush the bearings in the spindle and reduce its life. The final step when changing a tool is to reset the Z datum as the position of the tool tip will have changed. It's important to note that the Z datum will reference either the top or bottom surface of your stock material depending on what you've specified in your job file. If you want to learn how to set the Z datum in more detail, we have got a specific video for this which we will link in the description. You'll need to set your Z datum before loading the new job on the Smartbench console to avoid getting any error messages related to Smartbench's boundaries in the Z axis. Finally, you can load the new job on your Smartbench console. If you don't know how to load a job, we'll leave a link to an article in the description. On the Smartbench console file run screen, there are buttons that allow you to live adjust your feed rate and spindle speed on the go while Smartbench is working. This is important because it helps you get your feed and speeds right, which can maximize tool and brush life. There's a maximum range of 5% to 200% to give you the best chance of getting the feeds and speeds right. If you want to learn more about feeds and speeds and what you should be using with Smartbench based on our experience in testing, please see our knowledge base articles with some useful quick start tables. We hope this video has given you a good insight into some of the common tasks that you have to carry out when using Smartbench. If you want to learn in more detail about how to perform some of these tasks, there's plenty of other articles and videos on our knowledge base, which we'll link in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.